What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited today because guess what came in the mail? I just got the Sony a7R 3 And this was quite an investment, but I'm super excited so that I can make better videos for you guys. And currently I'm shooting on the Sony A Alpha 6000, but I'm planning to switch to this very soon, as soon as I get lens. Let's get back to the video. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Code Ray, and I'm currently an incoming software engineer at a fan company. And on this channel, I help you to navigate and succeed in your tech interview. So today I wanted to talk about the five things that helped me to prepare and pass the Google software engineering interview and a lot of other technical interviews that I've had. I think that preparing with these five tools can definitely make you well prepared to do any single technical interview. And if you follow these steps, it can definitely help you for future interviews as well. For this video, I would talk about each of these resources and how I use them to prepare for the interview. So the first resource that we have is LeetCode. Now, I know a lot of you have already heard of LeetCode and it's pretty wide in the tech community, but I cannot stress how important it is when preparing for tech interviews. So for those of you who don't know what LeetCode is, LeetCode is this huge database full of questions from easy, medium to hard based on questions that people have thought of in the past for technical interviews. So when I first started recruiting, the first thing that I did was I created a LeetCode account and I also got LeetCode Premium. So I remember LeetCode Premium to be around $35 a month when I was applying and I currently think it's still around the same price, but I think $35 a month is such a great investment and has a high return on your investment because if you just pay $35 a month and you grind for like one to two months on lead code questions, then you might be really well prepared for an interview that could potentially give you a lot more money. So one tip that I have for starting out with lead code is you might be at first daunted by the plethora of questions that they have. And if you tried an easy or medium question, you might be quite confused about like how to do the question or it might be kind of confusing to how to solve it in the language that you chose. But I suggest first trying to do a few of the easy problems. And then once you can do the easy problems, try to do the medium problems. And a lot of times the medium problems are a lot harder and it might take you around 30 minutes to an hour. In this time period, try to figure out different ways that you can to try out the problem, try to figure out the brute force solution, and then try to figure out a better solution. But over time, if you really can't solve the problem, I suggest looking at the solution. Now, a lot of people say not to look at the solution, but I think looking at the solution is a really great way to learn about the ways that other people have thought about how to approach the problem, and then you can apply those methods to other problems as well. Another great place to look at perspectives from other people based on solving these problems is the discussions page in LeetCode for each question. On a discussions page, you can see a lot of people talking about how to do the problem in different languages and just seeing the way that other people have approached a problem or how they code or how they write code can really help you to improve your coding style as well. Furthermore, in terms of the technical language to start with for doing LeetCode questions, if you haven't started with a language or you're not really familiar with any language, I suggest starting in Python. For me, I learned Java in school, but I wasn't really great at Java. And so I started learning Python because my friend told me that Python is a really easy language to start. And it's also a really good language to interview in because a lot of the times it's a lot easier to write Python syntax than Java syntax because you have to remember a lot more for creating data structures in Java. And so the second resource that I recommend is something called Pramp. So a lot of you might not have known about Pramp, um, but it's actually a really great online resource. And what it actually is, is you can just go on their website and make an account. And once you make an account, they actually pair you up with other students and interviewees who are currently interviewing for jobs like you as well. And they basically pair you up and you guys get to mock interview each other. So I found this resource really helpful because mock interviewing is such a helpful resource to allow you to basically elaborate your thoughts when you're thinking about a question. It's a lot different to just code leak code questions by yourself in your room versus actually thinking about a problem out loud and talking about it with another person. Also, in the mock interview, you become the interviewer and the interviewee in two different instances. So you basically get to understand how to ask people guiding questions in order to help them get to a solution or to understand how people think about a specific problem. And I think looking through the lens of an interviewer when you do mock interviews is really helpful because when you're doing actual interviews and an interviewer asks you guiding questions, you can 
have a better understanding of what they're trying to get you to go into or what they're trying to get you to solve. Furthermore, Pramp is totally free and it's also a really great way to just test your skills out with questions that you've never seen before. And I highly suggest it if you don't have anyone to currently mock interview with you in person. But if you do have people to mock interview with you in person, I also suggest doing that because during the interview, you both have virtual interviews and also in-person interviews. So it really helps to do mock interviews both in person and online virtually through Pram. So the third resource that I have for you guys is a pretty common resource and it's called Cracking the Coding Interview. A lot of you guys might have already purchased this book or are thinking about it or have been told to purchase this book and I think it's a really great way to understand the basics of interviewing, how you should approach interview problems, and also they have different sections on various data structures. And the biggest thing that I got from this book was basically reading the first few pages of each chapter and really understanding the data structures and how to understand them at the basic level so that I can better understand how to approach them for more advanced questions. So I totally don't suggest having to look through the whole book, but to look through each part of the sections on the data structures and algorithms that you're having trouble with. And that would really help you to basically understand more of the fundamental structures of those data structures so you can get a better grasp of how to complete them for future interviews. So the fourth resource that I recommend is another book and it's called Elements of Programming Interviews. And I have the Python version, but it's also in Java as well. I really like this book because although I already had Cracking the Coding interview with me, that book taught me a lot more about the basic structures of data structures and algorithms, while this book tackled on the harder parts and the more advanced questions. And they had a lot more questions that I felt really helped me to get a better grasp of the more complicated questions that were asked by interviewers. So I studied this book by going through each of the sections that I thought were really important to me and stuff that I needed to work on, and then going through their questions and they had solutions for those questions, really understanding the explanations and how to approach these particular questions in the future. I really like this book because I have the Python version, and if you're doing Java, you might get the Java version, but it really teaches you good advice and tips for how to do coding interviews in the specific language that you're in. So it taught me really good shortcuts and tricks for coding in Python during my technical interviews, and I believe it does the same with Java and its Java book. So finally, the fifth resource that I have is called firecode.io or HackerRank. Now I know these are two different resources that I'm mentioning in my fifth resource, but I think that there's a lot of things that are good about both of them that they can be used interchangeably. So HackerRank, you might have already heard of, a lot of companies use HackerRank for their online assessments, and a lot of people have talked about HackerRank to do sort of like coding interviews, something like LeetCode. But what I like about HackerRank and Firecode.io is that they have sections where you can essentially take a look at what data structures you want to improve on, click on the specific data structure, and specifically work on problems with that specific data structure or algorithm. So let's just say you have trouble understanding when to use trees or how to use trees, and you want just more practice on it. So basically you can click on the specific content in Firecode.io or HackerRank and do a lot of questions in that specific data structure so that when you ever see those questions again in the future in an interview, you know instantly that you should use a tree in order to get the best runtime solution. Furthermore, I think these two resources really help because they also allow you to level up in certain instances and they're just really fun and unique ways to allow you to keep going instead of getting that sense where like, oh, these are just doing questions and you end up being bored of them. When I was interviewing, I practiced quite a bit on HackerRank and Firecode.io for a lot of the structures that I didn't know and I also got a few of my friends to mock interview me with these questions because a lot of the questions that were asked on Firecode and HackerRank were questions that I really needed to understand, I really needed to help with. So these are the five resources that I think really helped me to prepare for the Google interview and also my other tech company interviews. Now, I know these aren't all the resources that have been used to help with interviewing, so there might be other resources as well. And if you have a resource that really helped you with your coding interview that you want to mention, make sure to comment below and tell me about it and I might take a look at it and try it out in the future. And I totally know that these aren't the five best resources, but these are the five that I think really helped me in the end. Furthermore, one last thing, 
is to check out my Instagram and my Twitter because on Instagram, I post a lot of information on my posts and I try to post a lot of information in order to help you guys because I know the current recruiting season is coming up and a lot of you are recruiting during COVID and I know it's super hard, but I want to try my best to help you with all things during your tech career. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you.